السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد My dear viewers everywhere welcome to another live edition of your program Ask Huda In another blessed day of the month of Ramadan our uh, contact information phone numbers area code 002-023-555-132 Alternatively area code 002-0100 5469323 and the Facebook page is the uh, Muhammad Salah official. Uh, the first question is from Ali Habiba. <coughs> Let's take a few calls first. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Amber from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Amber. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you? Doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you. Uh, for Sheikh, asking. I have uh, three questions. Please. First one. Uh, in our Salah, do we have to uh, read the Surahs in the order they appear in the Mushaf? Like, say, Surah Falak and then Surah Nas, or can I uh, say the Surahs in uh, any order? Like in the first Rakah, I'm saying Surah uh, Kahaf, and in the sec second Rakah, I'm saying um, um, Surah Fat, uh, the other, any other Surah before Surah Kahaf. Okay. Yes, and, it is. Uh, Go ahead. <coughs> My second question is, um, how can I um, uh, make up my uh, missed fast starting from the first day of the puberty, like uh, fasting becomes obligatory upon you, and I have missed um, many, so like I'm trying to uh, do the, the uh, uh, voluntary fasting, and um, does that uh, compensate for the missed fasting, or do I have to do that all Separately, or can I uh, do the fidya, you know, feed the poor, like that? Okay. Um, and third is, I want to know about this uh, dua that um, um, uh, I read it somewhere, and it says that uh, you should read it in every situation. Allahumani asaluka imanan kamilan wa yakinan sadiqan wa risk. It goes on like that. Uh, quite a few more. Uh, okay. Yeah. About the authenticity of this dua, is it uh, like one of the prescribed duas or what? And uh, like that. All right. That's all. Awesome. Thank you. Jazakallah. Yeah, most welcome, Sister Amber from the KSA. <coughs> Sister Aziza from Qatar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Huda. How are you today? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Welcome. I have a couple of uh, questions, but actually there's a lot of questions. Sorry for having some, uh, uh, a lot of questions. The first question regarding, uh, if you still remember that yesterday I was asking about the weekly prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry to ask again uh, because I'm not really fully understand about the explanation. My doubt is, uh, is it per uh, permissible if, uh, if someone still uh, pray any Nafila prayer? When you at home accept witty prayer after you have performed the witty prayer in the masjid during the tarawih, and the second question for the musafir is uh, in the authentic uh, sunnah, someone used to pray on witty prayer or before fajr prayer for their uh, during his uh, uh, musafir. But my question is, for example, like uh, I am from Malaysia, but I live in Qatar. For so during my travel to Malaysia, when I reach my mom house. Is it, uh, can I perform a complete or uh, tamam prayer, or can I lead the prayer, or uh, can I perform any nafla prayer except then uh, these two uh, sunnah prayer? And <coughs> about the zakah, the third question, can someone pay the zakah directly to the beneficiary? Uh, for for example, uh, if they are eligible to, for example, to the family members, or should he go to the appointed collector? Well, uh, I, I didn't get the, I didn't quite get the third question, Aziza. If you can repeat the third question, I'll appreciate that. Okay, uh, it's about the zakah. 
can someone pay the zakah directly to the beneficiary, for example, uh, the one eligible to, for example, uh, any of the family members, uh, for the masakin, for example, poor, that they are needy people, or should he go to the appointed collector uh, to, to pay the zakah? And the fourth question is, uh, what is the ruling on uh, looking or holding a mustaf during the prayer? And the next question is, uh, can someone pray only uh, the witter only one raka due to the constraint? And the sixth, uh, the next question, when should one uh, perform sujud shahri uh, after or before taslim? And my last final question, <laughs> uh, I <come> <laughs> Sorry for having so many doubts. I didn't get your uh, previous mind. question. The sixth question, you said what before or after the Tasleem? Uh, okay, this one is like, for example, uh, oh, okay, this one, uh, when you should, uh, one should perform the uh, forgetfulness uh, prostration, is it after Tasleem or before Tasleem? You mean Sujood of Sahu? Yes. Okay. Yes, and the last. Uh, inshallah uh, Alhamdulillah Jazakallah khairan uh, For you Shaykh And for the team Because I watch you In the series of the How to pray According to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Only one thing I have thought about it About the, how one should uh, Place his finger I mean uh, He kept the finger Pointing or Only when she uh, Shahada Or until when uh, I mean like uh, He will uh, Keep the finger Pointing uh, Till he, he gives Salam or should he uh, bring back uh, all the finger down uh, just before the scene? You know, Sister so, Aziza, so I guess uh, mm -hmm. we should not take any calls today because your questions would uh, take the whole time, mashallah, to answer. <laughs> uh, I got seven of your questions. I'll do my best, inshallah, to answer them. Thank you, Sister Aziza. Uh, Sister Amber from uh, the KSA, her first question is, Reading the chapters in the Quran, does it have to be in the same order? No, it doesn't have to be in the same order. So if you recite it in the first raka'ah, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ nas, and then you recite it, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الفلق, in the second raka'ah, that is permissible. What is restricted is reciting not in a descending order within the raka'ah itself and shoveling the ayat. Um, her second question is, making up the missed fasting since she have reached the age of puberty. And I want to thank you so much for presenting this question. Many of us were not practicing since our youth. Many of us started practicing the deen later. Some used to pray, but used not to fast. <clears throat> and they skipped a lot of fasting. In this case, now, alhamdulillah, Allah have guided me, you, or us, and I'm praying regularly, I'm fasting on a regular basis, and I'm fasting even voluntary fasting. What am I supposed to do with the missed days since reaching the age of puberty? After these calls, inshallah. Brother Abdullah from the KSA, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, Sheikh, uh, I have two questions. You no. know, I want to ask it, uh, is it permissible to say Abdul uh, Nekah in the uh, day of the month of Ramadan? And the uh, uh, second question, you know, uh, we have a lot of poor people in the Muslim society, you know. So it, it is my question why we should pay 110 billion dollars for paying Allah for, Thank you. Uh, for buying weapons, you know, it, it, your it questions. Abdullah. Um, I just want to write down your questions. Abdullah and Abdullah wasn't calling from the KSA uh, but please uh, remember lying is a big sin and especially in Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Farzana. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you saying? Doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Farzana from the KSA. No, from India. Sir. From India, mashaAllah. Okay, you're calling all the way from India. Farzana, go ahead. 
Sister Farzana, I don't have any sound. Sister Farzana, please try again. I'm very interested in taking your questions. Please try again. Mustaqim from Libya. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, please. Assalamu alaikum. My dear brother, Hello. please mute your TV, please. Hello. Lower the volume of your TV or even mute it, that is better. Or move to another room and talk to me from your handset. All right, sir. Hello? Yes. Okay, Mustaqim, please try again later. On. Sister Farzana from India is back on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My question is when we are doing su uh, dua in sujood, do we have to uh, invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do a glorify to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or straight away we can uh, do dua for uh, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Okay. This is my question. Yeah, got your yeah, question. question. Thank you, yeah, sister. And one more thing. I heard in the last episode that uh, there's some issues in the... Uh, signals and all, and inshallah, uh, all our viewers, the war is with Huda TV, and inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely help us to take that advantage from Huda TV. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you, thank you, Sister Farzana. Barakallah fiki, appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, uh, so for making up the missed fasting, number one, once a Muslim reaches the age of puberty, fasting becomes obligatory. Before that, practicing is recommended, and you will be rewarded for fasting before reaching the age of puberty. But once the person reaches the age of puberty, then fasting during the month of Ramadan becomes obligatory. Similarly is the prayers and so on. So in this case, you estimate how many days that you skipped fasting during this time, or ever since you reached the age of puberty, and if you think that it is two Ramadan, maybe 60 days, 58 days, 59 days, more or less, in a state of fasting, voluntary fasting, you need to make up those days because they will not be waived simply because there are too many. If a person used to pray, then he's a Muslim, then they must fast. And if he skip fasting, whether due to a concession or a legitimate reason or out of negligence or out of laziness those days must be made up it isn't sufficient to give the fidya because Allah the Almighty prescribed the fidya only for those who cannot afford fasting such as elders who reach senility such as people with chronic sickness they live with it and they are not expected to recover or feel better or be able to fast in the future. May Allah make it easy for you in addition to making tawbah and asking Allah sincerely to grant you and ask forgiveness of course for our shortcomings. Try to make up those days by fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. So this way you will get the virtues of fasting on these days and meanwhile your intention is the qada, making up those days, not the voluntary fasting. Thank you, Sister Amber from the case A. <clears throat> um, we have Sister Aziza from uh, Qatar. She says she's Malaysian and she's visiting for a few days in, in Qatar. She asked about the Witr prayer. Now I can figure out where you're coming from because in Malaysia, the Malaysian community are mainly Shafi'i, they follow the Shafi'i Madhab. So, according to Imam Muhammad ibn Idris al Shafi'i, and according to the vast majority of the scholars, it is disliked to pray which in this format three rakahs altogether and tashahud after two rakahs. That is similar to praying Maghrib. And there is a sound hadith in this regard. The Prophet said, Don't you pray which like 
Maghrib. So why do people who are following the Hanafi Madhab pray it similar to Maghrib? They say we do not pray it similar to Maghrib because we recite Qunut in the wit in the last rak'ah and there is no Qunut in the uh, Maghrib prayer. In any case, this format is disliked because there is a hadith in this regard. The approved formats of praying which either you pray two rakahs, tashahud and tasleem, then you pray one rakah by itself, that's which, or you pray the three rakahs all together with one tashahud and tasleem by the end, and that too is approved. So if you pray with one rakah, Aziza, that is permissible. But according to Imam Hanifa, it is not permissible. But aqallul witri, the least number of rakahs for which is one rakah, and that is valid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Sabir from Kuwait. Sabir. Assalamu alaikum, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Naam, assalamu alaikum. Welcome yeah, to Ask Quda, ask, brother. Yeah, thank you so much. Wa alaikum, assalamu. I want to ask you, Sheikh, uh, my question is about zakat. Uh, should I pay zakat if I have uh, more than two or three flats and I'm renting them? Okay, so you're asking about paying zakat on a property that you're renting. Yes, yes, because I have uh, more than two. There is no zakah on the rental properties, even if they are worth millions. You pay zakah on the revenue that is created from, generated from the rent, after paying the utilities, expenses, and all of that. So the remains, whether by itself or in addition to other positions that you have, you pay zakah on that. Thank you, Brother Sabr from Kuwait. Uh, <clears throat> She said since she's a musafir, she's traveling, and she doesn't have to pray sunnah, and she gets to shorten the prayer. What about the two rakahs, the sunnah for fajr? The two rakahs, which are known as sunnah al-fajr, the Prophet sallallahu said regarding their virtues, they are better than the whole world and what it contains. This is how great, how precious it is to pray the two rakahs, the sunnah for fajr. And out of all the nawafil, all the voluntary prayers, the Prophet ﷺ used to pray the two sunnah before fajr and the witr while traveling. So in regular conditions, he was very keen to pray the two rakahs of fajr, of the sunnah before fajr. And while traveling, you're exempt from praying the nawafil, the emphatic or non-emphatic sunnah, before or after the prayers such as the four rakahs before Dhuhr and the two after Dhuhr, two after Maghrib, you're musafir, you're exempt. And that's why you shorten the prayer. You pray Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha, only two rakahs. And Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, and his father said, لو كنت مسبحا لأتممت. If I'm going to pray the sunnah, then I would rather pray the fard full. But, for the two rakahs, the sunnah before fajr, even if you're traveling, even if you're performing hajj, and on the day of uh, tarwiyah, on the day of arafah, on the day of eid, or any of the ayam of the tashriq, when you shorten your prayer and you're constantly moving from one location to another, make certain that you pray the two rakahs before fajr and the witr prayer by the end of the day. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Rahma from Egypt, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum, Alaikum, Alaikum. Sheikh, I would like to ask you a question about if it's uh, permissible, if you want to have a child, that you uh, have a doctor help you um, choose the sex of the child. Okay. Any other questions? No, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Rashima from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. I'm asking, I wanted to pay the car, but for last year I didn't pay. How can I do? For, can I wait for next year until next year finish? Or I don't know how. What I understood from you, Rashima, that you didn't pay the car last year and you're asking. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, I was not confirmed about it. Uh, you missed paying zakah last year, and now yeah. you want to ask about making up the zakah. Okay. Uh, how can I pay for this year and next and last uh, year? Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you. You guys heard me earlier answering Sister Amber about making up the missed days of fasting since the puberty. The zakah will not be waived simply because you did not pay it for years. Whether you were negligent or because that you were not practicing. So last year, a few years ago, you were not paying zakah and you have wealth. You still owe this money. You estimate how much you owed last year and the previous years and you still have to pay them as soon as possible. So you pay the zakah of the last year along with the zakah of this year. The zakah is the wealth, the zakah is the purification of one's wealth and it is the right of the poor in your wealth. It is not a favor that you will be doing to the recipients, no, it is the right. It is Allah's right and the poor's right in your wealth. Allah the Almighty have warned in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِزُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِضَّةَ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ For those who harbor gold and silver, and they do not spend it for the sake of Allah, they do not pay their due zakah, it will be heated up on the day of judgment, and it will turn into like fire to brand the body of the person who did not pay their zakah, their faces and their backs. May Allah protect us again is that. So you better pay the zakah once it is due. Those who postpone their payment for the zakah, they are at a big, big risk. They're taking a big chance. Please pay the zakah once it is due. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Faisal from the case A. Assalamu alaikum, brother Faisal. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Ramadan Mubarak, Sheikh. Ramadan Mubarak to you and to your family, brother Faisal. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sheikh. I have two questions. Uh, the first question is uh, after the witir uh, of the Taraweeh, can I go, uh, you know, do my um, tahajjud prayer? Uh, that's my first question. Second question is, um, do I need to say Amin during the du'a in the witir? Mm. Any other questions? And that's it. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alright, thank you. Sister Aziza, um, her third question is, Paying the zakat to the recipients directly, or do I have to pay it to the authorities and they will take care of its distribution? Every person is responsible for paying their zakat. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he used to send his workers in order to collect the zakat because he was in charge of distributing the zakat. If somebody pays it on his own, fine. If he has relatives, if he has somebody whom he knows that they are desperately in need, that's fine. If I trust this, whether profit or non-profit organization, um, authority, or it is an NOG, and I trust them that they are going to distribute my zakah to the proper recipients, they will do it. People say that we're going to send money to the Rohingyas in Burma, and you trust them, do it. I was going to send money to support the refugees on the sea and Turkish borders, the Syrian refugees. Do it, no problem. To our brothers and sisters in Gaza, they need help. Do it. And by the way, brothers and sisters, I want you to remember the Palestinian uh, prisoners. They are actually captivated in the Israeli prisons. They're being mistreated and they are on a hunger strike for so many days now. May Allah help them. May Allah protect them. So include them in your dua at the time of breaking your fast. And may Allah destroy the perpetrators and the enemies of Allah and his deen. Sister Aziza from Nigeria, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullah. This question is from you or from the baby? 
Hello, Salaam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. You can give him or her the phone, they will ask. <laughs> Ramadan Mubarak to you. Ramadan Mubarak to you and your family, sister Aziza. So I want to ask, um, I missed uh, some fast last uh, Ramadan and uh, I wasn't able to pay because I was pregnant uh, throughout the year and now I have the baby and I still can't, I, I wasn't able to repay my five previous fast. So how do I do it? Whenever, insha'Allah, you're able to fast, fast the missed days of the previous Ramadan and the one before. Because as long as, alhamdulillah, you're healthy, <clears throat> so the reason for not fasting is temporary. You cannot resort to the fidya unless if it is something permanent. So, alhamdulillah, you still have a long way to go. May Allah keep you healthy and bless you and your family. So, once you're capable to fast, remember how many days you've missed and start making them up and it doesn't have to be consecutive. Thank you Sister Aziza from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Umar from Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. My dear brothers and sisters, we're going to take a short break and inshallah we'll be back in a few minutes for some more. Please stay tuned. messenger after a messenger after a messenger ending with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Prophet Nuh alayhi salam Prophet Hud alayhi salam Prophet Salih alayhi salam Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam Prophet Musa alayhi salam Prophet Isa alayhi salam and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a series of the lights of guidance discussing the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala learning from their lives going through this exciting, amazing, informative, special journey with the lights of guidance on Huda TV, where we will discuss together, where we will live together with each and every prophet in an amazing episode, learning from them, pondering upon their experience, meditating upon their life, relating to it, and getting lessons that affects us in our life to be the servants and the followers of those prophets and the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be discussing this series of lights of guidance. So be with me and join me in this beautiful series so we learn together and we pass it through the next generation. So please join us on Huda TV. I will be with you in this amazing journey. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We welcome you month we all adore We pray for happiness The Quran, the book of Allah, the miraculous words of Allah The light in the midst of all darknesses Has so many rights on us And because of that we initiated Quran Circle In Quran Circle 1 we listened to the entire Quran This was a great blessing the Quran is both concise and comprehensive. It has all aspects of guidance to all mankind. And because of that, in Quran Circle 2, we selected verses in every juz with a specific topic. We listened to the recitation and we reflected upon the meaning of that specific topic. الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكات فيها مصباح. Each surah in the Quran, every chapter of the Quran has an objective. We looked into the objectives of the surahs that we chose and selected in Quran Circle Three. لينذر من كان حيا. 
يَحْقَلْ قَوْلُ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Brothers and sisters, join us this Ramadan in Quran Circle 3. Get ready, open your Mus'hafs, and follow with the recitation, and wait for the reflection after we finish the recitation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back and I would like to remind you quickly with our phone numbers area code 002 then 023855132 the other number is same area code then 0100 5469323 mashallah um, we have already many questions but I would still like to take uh, some more of your valuable questions and concerns <coughs> Uh, Sister Aziza from Qatar asked earlier about looking at the Mus'haf while reading the prayer. Is that permissible? Yes, it is permissible according to the vast majority of the fuqaha, whether you are an imam or praying by yourself. It is worth of mentioning here that Imam Abu Hanifa restricts that and he says it resembles the people of the book because they do not memorize their book. But because of the practice of the companions, um, and uh, you know many of them uh, of reading from the Quran while praying so it is permissible uh, now we're talking about the voluntary prayer like in the Taraweeh and the long prayer for the Fard the person <coughs> should memorize enough surahs to be able to recite in the Fard the prayer out of his memory <coughs> uh, for the Witr prayer it is uh, the least number of rakahs for which is one rakah and the person can pray them three can pray five can pray seven and in case that he is praying more than one rakah then as explained earlier he can pray the three rakahs all together with one tashahud and taslim by the end uh, or pray the two rakahs with tashahud and taslim then one rakah by itself and tashahud and taslim separate <clears throat> the qunut in the water prayer is sunnah, is recommended, and there is a hadith narrated with regards to what the Prophet used to say in the qunut. It shouldn't be long, it shouldn't be recited as if it is a form of Quran, as many people recite it with a melodious voice, they make it as a song or as a, or as a nasheed. Uh, it rather should be the Al Hassan ibn Ali narrated, may Allah be pleased with him and his father that the Prophet ﷺ used to recite Allahumma hdina fi man hadayt wa'afina fi man afayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt etc. Uh, reciting a very long qunut is not of the sunnah of anything. It is something that people uh, basically invented and it burdens many people in the prayer. They want to practice the sunnah and pray with the imam all the way until he finishes but for some reason, some imams recite such a long uh, qunut, maybe equivalent to the time of the whole prayer. This is not the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The sixth question of um, Sister Aziza about uh, sujudu al-sahw. Sududu as sahu the two prostrations for forgetfulness. When to pray them before or after we finish the salah? Uh, of course, that has a, a detailed explanation. Like if you have missed something in the prayer, then you made it up or you remembered it, so you make the sujood before making taslim. If you have made something extra, like you prayed an extra rak'ah then you pray the sujood after the taslim and you make another taslim but either way if a person doesn't know the detailed explanation and he or she happened to pray the two prostrations before taslim after tashahud and before taslim 
or after the tashahud and taslim, it is accepted and it is permissible. <coughs> Um, Sister Rahma from uh, Egypt asked about the permissibility of determining the sex of the baby, the gender of the child. Is it permissible or not? Uh, it is true that Allah the Almighty stated in Surah Ashura that He grants whomever He wills boys and he grants whomever he wills girls and he makes whomever he wills have both boys and girls and he makes whomever he wills sterile لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah the Almighty explained that he grants whomever he wills يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورِ أو يزوجهم ذكرانا وإناثا ويجعل من يشاء عقيمة I'll continue answering this question after this call إن شاء الله السلام عليكم Brother Umar from Nigeria السلام عليكم عليكم السلام يا شيخ رمضان كريم بارك الله فيك رمضان مبارك to you and your family go ahead الحمد لله سوري يا شيخ I asked a question last to you but when you answer the question the following day, I wasn't around. I travel a while, but uh, that is uh, one praying. I asked that some used to hold their hands, while some used to leave their hands straight. And you answer the following day because there is no time you say you answer the following uh, day. But when you answer, I wasn't around. So I don't know which one is the right one. Place the right on the left on top of your answer. chest. Brother Umar, do not let your hands loose in the prayer, whether in the fard or the nafila. was never narrated from the Prophet ﷺ. Put the right hand on the left hand on top of your chest. If you put it lower, that is permissible. There are different narrations, but this is the ideal uh, situation. Jazakallah khairan. Brother Umar from Nigeria. Back to Sister Rahma's question because it's a very important question. So uh, Allah the Almighty says in Surah Al-Shura in the two consecutive ayahs 49 and 50 لِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ To Allah belongs the domain of the heavens and the earth. He creates whatever He wills. يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا He grants whomever He wills girls, females. وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذكور. And he grants whomever he wills, boys, males. And in many cases, Allah grants whomever he wills, both boys and girls. And sometimes he makes whomever he wills, sterile. He made some of the prophets sterile. إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ قَدِيرٌ What a combination of two of the most beautiful names of Allah. He's all-knowing and he's able to do all things. One should be happy and pleased with Allah's decree for him or her. If Allah give you a boy, a girl, they're all girls, they're all boys, alhamdulillah. This is all from Allah the Almighty. I don't want you to jump into conclusion. Just wait to the rest of the answer, but there are calls I would like to take them as well. Umm Nu'man from Qatar. Assalamu alaikum, sister Umm Nu'man. Wa alaikum assalam. Please, go ahead. Yes, I have two questions. Uh, my first question is regarding the zakat. Uh, my husband has been paying my zakat for the past few years. I'm not working. So do I have to pay zakat by selling my jewelry or he can continue to pay? Will the reward remain the same? Or is it advisable that I sell my jewelry and I pay my zakat on my own? Okay. And... My second question is, uh, there is a f organization in India, in Karnataka, it's known as IMA. Uh, they, it's an Islamic organization, and they deal with selling of jewelries. So they ask us to invest in them, and they give you a, you know, a variable return every month. So basically for 1 lakh rupees, you might get like 3% to 5% every month return. So is this permissible? 
they claim that they are investing only in gold is it permissible for us to invest in this firm uh, or is there any type of interest involved in this okay uh, sister umun man the form that you've mentioned is very simplified i will not be able to tell you halal or haram just simply by saying that somebody invests in gold selling gold because in gold particular it requires certain uh, guidelines the Prophet ﷺ said for selling gold for gold الزهب بالزهب so it must be the same value of gold for an exchange of the same value of gold يدن بيد and on the spot you give the old and you buy the new for innocence this is just dealing with gold if it is gold for any other currency gold for silver gold for cash then the requirement would be on the spot so I, I'm not sure whether these conditions are fulfilled or not. If they have a legal committee, they follow the guidance of the Sharia in this regard, and you trust their legal committee, and they say, what we do is we give you a share of the profit. Because if any investment, if any investment on earth that you pay a certain amount, and they guarantee you a specific amount of return, whether it is, uh, you know, certain amount like I will give you that much, uh, then in this case, this is definitely a form of usury. If it is an investment, sharaka or murabaha, partnership or uh, or even uh, mudaraba, in this case, I get a percentage of the profit based on the profit loss. I share both in the profit and I share in the loss in case that there is a loss but if I give my money to some firm a person or a company and uh, they say we'll give you 6% guaranteed okay in this case the return is already uh, predetermined 6% of what they do not give you 6% of your uh, uh, of the profit they give you 6% of the capital sum which means I'm already aware that beforehand, when I put 100,000, I'll get every month 6,000. This is pure riba. Okay? But if they invest the money and they say, we'll give you 6% of the profit because your partnership or your share is equivalent to that much, the percentage of the profit. So they sold the gold, they sold the silver, they invested in the market or in the currency exchange and there is a profit and you get the six percent of the profit that is permissible but there was no profit you get nothing you encountered loss the, the, the company encountered loss so I will encounter loss which is equivalent to the same share or percentage of the profit in case that there was to be uh, or there was going to be any profit Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brother Abdul Rashid from Libya. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Abdul Rashid. Uh, Ramadan Mubarak, Sheikh. Barakallahu feek and same to you, Brother Abdul Rashid. May Allah bless you and your family. Sheikh, uh, my question is about Zakat. Uh, the uh, zakat will be safe for only poor Muslim or whether he is non Muslim, you can pay for him or her. Okay, got your question, Abdul Rashid. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Sister Rahma, again, the question about determining the gender of the child. So I quoted the ayah and I said, Allah the Almighty is Alim, Qadir. He knows best. Having a boy or having a girl or having both boys and girls or not having any at all, this is good for you. You may say, no, 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 I know it is good for me. This is not you because you don't know the near future, let alone the far future. And you know the story of Al-Khadr when he killed the baby, the child, and he said that, uh, his parents were righteous and he was going to give them a hard time because he was going to be 
a disbeliever and wicked when he grows up. So Allah the Almighty decided to give them a better replacement and so on. So Allah knows best. But is it still permissible if I have an access to determine the gender of the child like somebody whom Allah blessed with six girls? Until today in some cultures, even in North America, in America, a lot of families, they give preference to boys over girls. They love to have a boy. Okay. So after having six girls and have been trying, I would like to see a son to bear my name, to manage the business after my death, to take care of whatever. Is it permissible? It is permissible with conditions. Number one, that this is one of the reasons which may allow you to do that. But what are the conditions? Not exposing one's aura. Not exposing one's aura. As you all know that the process of the in vitro fertilization uh, would require the woman to be exposed repeatedly before her doctor. If there was no need for the in vitro fertilization, she wouldn't have to go through that. Okay? Maybe only during giving birth. Or if she is following up with a female gynecologist. So it is very limited. Sometimes they have uh, those nurses who would deliver the woman at the time of birth and she would not be exposed to uh, a male doctor whatsoever. The risk of mixing the, uh, you know, the sexual discharge, whether the sperms or the eggs, through genetic engineering, yes, the scholars and the scientists manage to control the chromosomes, which will determine the gender of the baby. Okay, in many cases it is successful. But being exposed and exposing your aura without a necessary uh, reason, and also the risk of mixing one's sperm with others is very dangerous. As you know that in, in the States a few years ago, there was a doctor who was arrested for, he has like a sperm bank and sperm donors, where people donate their sexual discharge so that he can uh, inoculate them in women who would like to have babies without having uh, a husband and so on. In, uh, you know, in this case, after a while, they found that this person, this doctor, happened to be the father of hundreds of kids because the sexual uh, discharge was only his. It is not permissible. Milk bank, sperm bank, egg bank, all of that is not permissible in Islam in order to maintain the family lineage. So if you fulfill these conditions, then it is permissible. Otherwise, one should be pleased with the decree and the decision of Allah. One doesn't know who is more beneficial for him. فعسى أن تكره شيئا ويجعل الله فيه خيرا كثيرا وعسى أن تكره شيئا وهو خير لكم وعسى أن تحب شيئا وهو شر لكم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون It may be that you dislike something while it is better for you and you may like something and you favor it over others while it is harmful, it is bad, it is evil for you and Allah knows and you know not. May Allah guide us to what is best. Brothers and sisters, we've come to the end of today's edition of your program. Ask Uda until tomorrow, insha'Allah. I leave you all in the care and the protection of Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech. Your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your deen allow me to advance. Help me in my quest. Permit me to pass the ultimate test.